there's an old joke. Okay, maybe it's not a joke. It's kind of a sad truth. But it seems to be a fact that if you want to... <laughs> how do we say it delicately? Hmm. I don't know if Jesus would have been so delicate. But to put it bluntly, if you want to find a Christian, you don't look in church. <laughs> um, the reality is, is that most of the people that I find that are Christians usually hate. They're very violent. They're very divisive. They get angry a lot. They get mad. They argue. They fight. They seem to act more like political pundits than they do people with the answer. So I guess we need a new word, you know, than Christian, because frankly, Christians don't seem to be very Christ-like lately. As a matter of fact, I can find, you know, political action committees that are more peaceful than Christians. And it seems like I can find, like, you know, a Christian soccer team or a Christian baseball team. I can find Christians in the Army. I can find Christians in the Navy. I can find Christian Marines. Let's see, I can see, I can find Christians that swear like a, like a truck, truck driver. I can find Christians that do all kinds of things, you know, that aren't Christ-like. I find Christians that lie, I find Christians that cheat, I find Christians that are in charge of anti-homosexual behavior in Congress, and they have sex with boys. I find Christian pastors that are the leaders on saving homosexuals, and they are having intercourse with homosexuals. doesn't sound very Christian or Christ-like to me. Matter of fact, I don't, I don't really know quite what a Christian is anymore. You see, I used to have a standard that I took from the Bible. And I read what Jesus said. You know, I mean, I, I was part of the Jesus movement after all. You know, I mean, I went in and I read... Matthew first, you know, I didn't read John first. Maybe I did, maybe I made my mistake there. I was only a New Testament, so the first thing in the first part of my little New Testament was Matthew. So I read that first, you know, and when I got to Sermon on the Mount, I went, yeah, this is what it's all about. Love your enemies. Of course you can't win by fighting them. You have to love them into the kingdom. This is what draws men to repentance, the love of God. And I thought, this is good news. So I lived my life that way for the last 35 plus years. And now I'm told that, no, that's not Christian. That's not Christ-like. You see, there's a time and a place for everything, you know, and that's not what you're supposed to do now. Now you're supposed to go out and get a gun to defend yourself. Huh, really? Now you're supposed to, you know, take courses on self-defense so that you can protect yourself. Huh. Really? Now you're supposed to get involved in politics and changing the government because we want to have a Christian nation. Huh. Really? Now, as a matter of fact, you know, we need to, you know, kind of coordinate things a little better so that we keep those drug addicts and those street people, you know, kind of in their place because they're not very Christ-like. Huh. Really? Man, I, I'm really beginning to feel like maybe I'm not a Christian because when I look at Jesus, when I talk to Jesus, when I follow Jesus, I seem to find something different in my life that makes me want to do something more about my life, that God gives me help to become more like Him so that I won't be like what I am. And then when I look around, I see what I was is what all these people want to be. You see, when I was alive and well and living in the 70s, 
I was part of the Vietnam era experience. Hey, we were bedrafted. My number was so high, I volunteered. And so we knew, we hippies, what it was to protest. So now we see all these Occupy Wall Streets and Occupy this, that, and the other thing, and we say, that's what we're supposed to do? Or we were part of the establishment that was going to change politics, so we marched into Chicago, you know, with the conventions, you know. We decided that we wanted to be a party of change, you know, so we didn't have the Tea Party, we had our party. We got involved in politics, we were the yuppie generation, so we changed the world in politics, didn't we? As a matter of fact, I think everything that everybody's doing now, we already tried and it didn't work. So you see, I, I'm having this problem dealing with the reality of what people are telling me a Christian is as they're doing dumb stuff that I've already done. You see, I look around and I say, okay, so you want to get involved in politics to make this change last for how long? Now, if I pray for and I work on and I ask God to be involved with me in trying to change the man that's in charge and pray for him and to care about him and to love him into the kingdom of God, then I'll change his heart. And if I can change his heart, then I'll change his mind. And as I change his mind, he'll come into one accord with me and he'll agree with me because the God that I serve will change his heart like he's able to change the king's mind in any direction whatsoever he turns it. So I know based upon my faith in God and God intervening and saying that he's done this before that he'll do it again and so all I have to do is do what God says to do and not what man wants to do and I can make change happen in my government. But that's not what Christians tell me to do. I'm beginning to get a little confused about this Christian thing. You see, I thought Christian meant being like Jesus. Maybe I'm wrong. But you know, if I'm the only one that's, that's wrong, you know, I mean, if I'm the only one that does, I think I'll stick with what Jesus said as opposed to what people are saying because frankly I don't think lately Christians know what they're doing it doesn't look like it to me but you know what between you and I I think as much as you got these rappers and you got these people you know that you know, are tattooed and you know everything else and doing all kinds of weird things you know and trying to jive their way in and change and rearrange and make even scriptures fit different ways and kind of rearrange the word and the gospel. I think those that are talking to God and walking with God, you know, and hearing from God, I think they got a better chance of making it through these next few years than those that don't. Because I don't know about you, but I'm looking around and I'm saying, you know, I don't know, but if, if what you're teaching ain't lining up with what Jesus is preaching, I just don't know what kind of teaching you're doing. Now, maybe that works for you, and I'm going to have to say, why don't you go do your Christian thing, wherever you are, whatever it is. But for me, a Christian is somebody who walks with God, who talks with God, who has a relationship with His Spirit that takes the Word of God and reads it and says, well, Jesus said, do this, and this is my commandment, that you love one another, and that my joy would be made full in you, and that you would know my Father, and my Father is love, and God is love, and you know, it seems to make sense to me. But you're telling me that I can't make sense of it by myself? I need you to tell me? Well, I think I'm going to stick with what God is telling me. So, I don't know about you, but I need to start looking around and saying to myself, I don't want politics to invade 
my faith. I don't want socialism to invade my faith. I want to do what God tells me to do. So if God tells me to go into politics, man, I'm there. I'll be the next president. Or if God tells me, you know, to go feed the hungry and the needy, you know, to go work in a mission, I think I'll go do that. But you see, when people tell me just to do these other things without checking in with God first, then I think they're missing the point because then they're making that politics God. Because if I am told by God to get into politics, then one thing I do know about God, while He may be telling me to get into politics, just as fast He may tell me to get out of the politics. And just as fast as He may tell me to get into helping out my brother in socialism, He may tell me to do something else instead. Because you see, the Gospel which is the ability to change every single human being in the universe is meant to be shared with everyone. The grace and mercy of God that has been demonstrated by our Father in Heaven by giving His Son was meant to be duplicated by me to the entire world, not just a select few and not just to do what I want to do. So I don't know about you, but I don't have a new word for Christian, but I sure got the right definition. Because as long as these people are doing their political thing, and they're doing their social thing, and they're doing their violent thing, you know, where they feel like they got to take a gun, you know, and shoot their enemies, you know, put them in the crosshairs, you know, and just pull the trigger, because you want to condemn that guy to eternal hell afterwards. After all, we don't want to worry about whether or not that person might have got saved. No, don't give God a chance to work on him. He might save them. Don't pull a Jonah. I mean, why would any gun-toting Christian want to read Jonah, of all things, and find out people could be saved? No. I've got my my gun-toting card, you know, and I can shoot anybody I want to as long as it's within the law. And when it's not, I'll put a gun in their hand. Hello? Who made you the giver of life that you could be the taker of life? I think I'm having a problem, you know, a crisis in my own mindset, you know, because I'm looking around and I'm trying to zero in on where did all the Christians go? It's almost like I want to sing that song Look what they've done to my song son. Look what they've done to my song Well it was something else and now it's coming out all wrong son Look what they've done to my song. I don't know what they're singing. I don't know what they're smoking. And I don't know what they're doing. But I know this. As long as I have a choice to make, and as long as I have a decision to give, then I think that I'm going to choose to serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my being because he will keep the faith of his saints or he will keep the feet of his saints if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we lie and do not the truth but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all sin he that is washed need not save but to wash his feet but is clean every whit and part thereof I have taught you in the way of wisdom, I have led you in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, 
and pass away. I wonder if there's evil men in politics. Nah, they're all honorable men. I wonder, you think there's any kind of corruptible stuff going on with helping out people, you know, like getting money in and distributing food and getting this and asking for donations and sending out requests and getting our IRS form in order? No evil there. Hmm. I wonder, could religious venues have their own form of evil with men that seek to say that Christian is about killing and not saving the world? Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before you. Ponder the path of your feet, and let all your ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. The Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. I wish you to have that promise from God. He has kept my feet from evil, and he has kept me on the straight. I am not violent. If you want to shoot me, you can. If you want to come and assault my family, you can try. Will I stand there and watch? Or will I ask God to intervene? Will you see the heavens opened up? Or will you see my family get stoned or killed or murdered? Will I die as a martyr? Or will I live as a righteous soul that was saved by God Almighty? It doesn't matter to me. You see, I have Jesus in me. I know the answers. I will not stumble, and I will not fall. But I have seen the ways of men and the evil that men do. I have seen how violence takes the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God suffereth violence, and they take it, they think, and then God intervenes. And the death of one saint can save thousands of souls. For I have seen how Stephen died. I have seen how Paul lived. I have seen how saints throughout the centuries have given up their lives, willing to follow Jesus even unto death. And they lost not their testimony, but they were witnesses to even this day the saving grace of God. How in the moment of their death, just like all the days of their life, they were able to say, Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. For they followed Jesus. They followed God's Even to the crucifixion of the disciples. Even to their own death. And most assuredly, to life everlasting. I don't know what you will do. I don't know what you are. But I know what I am. And I'm a man that will walk with Jesus every day. And I'm a man who will talk with God in every way I can. And I, will, I am a man that will persuade and cajole and beg you and plead with you to seek the Lord while He may be found. To read His Word and understand it for what it is saying to you. Walk with God Almighty and you will not fear these things that will come upon the world. But if you don't, if you don't hear His voice, if you don't heed his call, if you don't listen to God speaking to you today, you will become a politician. You will become a violent man. You will, or woman, you will become other than the son and daughter of God because you will be led astray. The world has a power and it is pulling away the church. 
It is yielding itself to forces outside it. And God will bring out from the midst of all seven churches a bride unto himself. Blessed are they that overcome. For even whether you live or die, we all may overcome by the word of our testimony, by the blood of the Lamb, and loving not our lives even unto death. Don't make your life the obsession and possession of your self-will, but make Jesus your focus and stay centered on Him and His words. When you lose your way in anything, whether it be in New Testament, Old Testament, theology, soterology, eschatology, all theologies, when you lose your way, when you can't find what it is that a Christian is, do me a favor. Try it. I don't say do it. Try it and see. Read Matthew. Read John. Read what's in red. Read Luke. But I would say this from you, from me to you, one on one. You want to know what a Christian is? Read Matthew's Sermon on the Mount. That is what a Christian is.